We're here to talk about what you I'm want sorry, to talk I think about. they decided they don't need a moderator. No. no. Just no. no. That's you don't, fine. You don't want us in moderation. You want the whole In Nevada, like all of it? Unfiltered, <laughs> medicated, oh, oh, dear me. little caffeinated. So you guys went plumbing. Us? Yeah. Us? Oh, we? Ah, yeah. oh, man. Well, take well comfort. I'm Comfort. Are, she's Comfort. I'm Adam. We are Comfort and Adam. We make comics. We do the uniques, we do Rainbow in the Dark, we did a kitty game, and we did a self, uh, or a uh, how-to book called The Complete Guide to Self-Publishing Comics. Yes, the uh, Guide to Self-Publishing Comics was released by Random House. It is the only thing that we have not self-published. Um, we are, yeah, we've been doing webcomics since we started self-publishing in 2008. Um, Initially, we, we've written a lot of different waves of comic release through the webcomic format as it has shifted and changed over the years. Mm -hmm. So, boy howdy, have, have we seen a lot. But we're still here, and we're still going, and it remains our full-time job. So, yeah. we know a thing or two about how to do it. That's right. All right, Jenny, who are you? Hi, who am I? Uh, my name Great is question. Jenny Breeden. I do a webcomic called The Devil's Panties. It is the original clickbait. <laughs> it is not, in fact, satanic porn. It's regular porn. Um, no, it's it's a slice of life journal comic. I've been posting it since 2001, and it's all about whatever I did that day. So as long as it's funny, I get a lot of comics out of out of Dragon Con. Um, I couldn't make this up if I tried. Um, I've actually toned some of it down because it's not believable. Uh, and and yeah. That's what I do. You didn't mention kill blowing. I mean, that's dragon, you know, <laughs> dragon con. That I mean, yeah. There's a. I have a leaf blower, and there's some guys in kilts. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of comics out of those. My favorite was the sorry, the zombie that showed up, and halfway across the stage, it fell off. <laughs> Great. Anyway. What okay, is it that you do? And I'm Bill Holbrook. I have been doing Kevin and Kel since 1995. Never missed a day. Yeah. And um, it wasn't the original webcomic. There were people who came before me. Like but four? <laughs> maybe yeah. two? No, they were maybe six. There were six, <laughs> yeah. But I've outlasted them, so it's the longest running daily webcomic. And... Um, I also do On the Fast Track and Safe Havens, which are pretty much also web comics now, considering how newspapers are dying. <laughs> I don't know if you heard, but this afternoon the Atlanta Journal-Constitution said they were cutting their print version permanently, Her, their weekday print version. The, they're only going to have the print version on weekends. So that means a seven-day newspaper comic is no longer in Atlanta. Um, it's pretty shocking that a city this size will no longer have a weekly, a daily print newspaper, which means that web comics are comics now. Yeah, we, yeah. we are it. <laughs> We're what you got. <laughs> I heard a story from uh, the PVP guy that he was trying to get into. Oh, yeah. To, uh, newspapers mm -hmm. and print comics and all the print comic artists were like oh no no you're, you're a web comic we're not going to let you in and then mm -hmm. the newspapers started dropping like flies and all of the, the print comic guys started going so web comics <laughs> what is, what is what, that what, what, how yeah. tell that yeah. Yeah. I'm desperation does a lot for some undisclosed reason uh, <laughs> I knew it. so anyways uh Who's got oh. questions? Because we've so, got answers. Oh. So, like, uh, who here does a webcomic? Okay. Yeah. Oh, who here oh, wants yeah. to do a webcomic? <laughs> okay. Go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So and a lot of people with curiosity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Going, yes, I would, or just needed to sit down. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair take a, chair. Take a nap in the back. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's good. So the good news is, is that the barrier to entry has pretty much disappeared. Oh yeah. As long as you can ha have a computer that has an upload capability, just find a venue and you're out there. Well, I think you can even use like your phone. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a lot of, of just upload it to your phone. 
Um, buy your domain name and post it on your website uh, because companies and social media don't care about you and they can delete your, your stuff just because they want to. Um, they can delete all your stuff just for because you use too many O's in the word con and you get kicked off of Facebook for a minute for hate speech. Oh, no. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> ah, three, four, five O's. No, yeah. still not okay. I'll wait until a human looks at it and okay. Um, so yeah, get get your own domain name and website. Use use WordPress for uh, no word. What's the uh, uh, WordPress. WordPress? WordPress? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 For for you know doing your website. Um, because yeah, uh, corporations, uh, Facebook and and Amazon and Twitter and and Webtoons don't care about you. So make sure that you have whatever you're working on somewhere that you control. Because they will let you upload to them for free, and you think this is such a great deal. I'm not paying for any hosting. But you are putting your work, your heart, and your soul in someone else's hands, and yeah, that's risky. And yeah, they they can delete that, and you can't get it back. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, having having backups and having something on your own server and on your own, you know, so you control it. Um, and then having also a, a domain name, a URL that goes back to your site that has your advertising, and so all of that social media is just advertising for your own site. Um, because yeah, I've had people who are like, oh yeah, I read you on Facebook. And I'm like, yeah, except you're not actually reading any comic that has to do with abortion or COVID. Mm -hmm. That those are not getting shared. That algorithm just yanks that right out. And so if you want to make sure that your readers can read all your comics, mm -hmm. no matter how many O's are in, <laughs> uh, you know, you always having something to link back to your own site is mm -hmm. invaluable. Do we want to open it up for questions? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, do we have a There's question? There's a microphone I believe they want us to use. So uh, if you have any questions. Woo! Whoa. Whoa. Good morning. <laughs> we made it. Hi. So, uh, How are you? So, yeah, any questions, feel free to come on down and, and speak up. So, uh, that's good. Sorry. Okay, yep. yeah. Yep. So, uh, in general, uh, what would you say is the ratio for handling the general quote unquote business side of the uh, web comic? You mean um, in terms of hours of the day? Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. That's uh, a lot of hours of the day. Yeah. Uh, but there's two of us. I do the vast, vast, vast majority of it. And it takes me hours, guys, to do it. It, it feels day. like it's around an 80 20. 80% of your yeah, that's, time that's is not quite it, but dealing it's... with business and marketing and social media and outreach. And like the easy part is making the book. The hard part is letting people know book exists. And that will be most of your time. Well, and even just the business side of taxes, making sure that your seller's permit is out. I, I have to go pay Indianapolis taxes because I did Gen Con. Uh, on Monday, we're all going to be filling out tax forms for Georgia. Um, I get angry letters from Texas saying, where is our money? And I was like, I haven't been in Texas in years. Um, and so, yeah, making sure that my P.O. box is paid up, making sure that uh, that my, my you know, seller's permits and then and then and then that stuff. And then I think that making sure, oh, that my that uh, I own, you know, I make sure that I own Devil's Panties LLC and then I have to pay that annually to make sure that that's still, you know, under my my trademark. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of business. There's a bunch of business things. And like no, day. no individual piece of it takes very long. But the more, the longer you go, the more you do, the better you get. The more success you have, the more you have to deal with it's, it. It's the maintenance of it, and I think like it. Here's the reality: it's part of the job, and you know we deal with it or we don't. But, uh, you know, it's required. But, like, once you get used to it, it's not like, this is killing me. It's fine. You're used to it. It's part of your day-to-day. -day. It takes a while to even get there where you are doing a whole lot of business. 
because building up the audience and all that kind of stuff for a webcomic, you know what? It takes a lot of time. And that's okay. I want to make sure that everybody isn't like, oh my God, it's a million hours of work right away. I can't handle it. That's not the case. It'll take you probably 10 years to get there, which sounds daunting. But if this is your passion, it's worth it. I do it. Um, I do the business on weekends and work on my scripts during Monday through Friday. So I guess it's a five to two ratio. Hey, um, what is the best way to get your webcomic out there uh, so that people can see it? And uh, if you're just producing a webcomic to produce a story and get a fan base uh, mostly, uh, would it be more worth it to uh, publish or just go, you know, webcomic route? It kind of depends on the comic and the audience that it's trying to reach, um, every venue is going to be d different, have a d d d different profile. Um, I try everything. Yeah, I, I think that the more places you can be, the better off you're going to be. Um, you know, I, I, I can agree with the point that was made earlier that you want to also have your work through a site of your own that you can control so that whatever happens elsewhere, you've always got a home page. But you also want to be elsewhere because that's where the audience is. So There's already, you know, millions of people reading Webtoon. Be there. Maybe right. once, you know, some percentage of those millions can find you. Like, it is a lot easier for you to figure out who your audience is, find where they congregate, and put yourself in front of them than to stand like in the middle of the public street screaming that you've got this thing and hope that people notice. What I would just quick add to that is, so like we've been on Webtoon for the last few years, but it's becoming increasingly clear that probably like uploading webcomics is gonna be like social media. Like every time I have a post to be like, here's some art we did, or here's a little funny tidbit, blah, 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 blah. I'll post it to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and if I'm feeling like I want to record something, TikTok, okay. But for the actual comic, it's probably going to be Webtoon and Tapitoon and Tapas and, you know, web comics. And whatever else I eventually am like, yeah, that's also a thing, because something like Webtoon starts and it's the only game in town but as time goes on, other companies crop up and you just want to be where people are because they might have an account here, but not an account there. Yeah, that's in the morning. I, I, put, I have a comic on the devil's panties. And then in the morning, I'll go and re, repost it to my Twitter personal with just the URL. And then I'll post the image of the URL on devil's panties Twitter and I'll do the same thing with personal Facebook and then Devil's Panties Facebook and Instagram. And so, and then I use hashtags. That's actually, you know, using hashtags for, hey, this is a comic about, you know, Frozen, or this is a comic about conventions, or this is a comic about rock climbing. <laughs> I got, I did a comic about trying to buy a house in 2004, and I had me climbing a pile of paperwork, and I actually researched rock climbers and the shoes. And I had rock climbers going like, what kind of shoes were those? What, what brand, was it this brand? And they totally got into the rock climbing aspect of home ownership. <laughs> <laughs> and so as far as building up your audience and getting it out there, you know, using the, the tags, uh, the hashtags and stuff. And, uh, and then, yeah, trying out the different, okay, I'm gonna post this on, on I tried webtoons. I tried uh, co coffee. Yeah, co yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. I tried that a little bit. You know, whatever the new thing is, you try that out. And as far as going, which is better, web or print? I post my comics online every day, and at the end of the year, I compile it into a printed book, mm -hmm. and I have a Kickstarter for all the comics from 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and and so that's you know one kind of leads into the other, and you have people who only want the digital book and there's people who only want the print book um, and so making sure that they have and then the digital book you post it up on comiXology and you post it up on and again you make it available to everybody 
uh, in whatever platform that you can get a hold of. So my question is, oops, I'm not going Sorry. As, <laughs> as aspiring creators, we're all going to have to get used to feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, my, uh, my question is more so about your, like, your workflow and inspiration. So how does the concept of the storyline come to you in most cases? And then what's that workflow look for like for you? Uh, Are you sketching? Yeah. Are you storyboarding? Just like, what is that? We do have, by the way, a uh, panel, I can't remember, is it tomorrow? Uh, How to Stay Motivated is at 1 p.m. on Saturday in the Comic and Pop Art Alley, but it is all about workflow and, you know, as a preview, I suppose. Like, so one of the things that we do is we have things, first of all, planned out far in advance. Uh, one of the comics we do is The Uniques, and it's a superhero story, sort of like uh, Teen Titans if it was an HBO series. But it's a long-term story that goes from 1996 until 2030. There are 10 seasons for The Uniques. And so we have to think really far ahead on what's going to happen. You know, not just a hey, beginning, middle, and end, but what's happening every season, what are the themes, all that kind of stuff. And so the big thing that we learn for workflow is that you start at the macro and then you whittle it down to the micro. Yeah, keep breaking it into smaller chunks. Most creative block happens because you don't know what to do next. But if you start by focusing on the big picture and then once you've got the big like plan for your major storyline, then you break it into like three acts or five acts, whatever makes sense for you. And then once you've got that breakdown pretty much set, you take act one. What happens in here? How do I you know, flesh out the details of what I'd laid here? And then once you've got that worked out for us, we then think, okay, season one, 10 issues. What happens in season one? Okay, now that we've got the overflow, like let's break that into our 10 issues. Okay, now, ten, now we've got issue one. And we always know where we're trying to go to next. We always know what the next step is. We never reach a point where we're like, well, we know A, B, and C. We know we need to get to L. But we got a big right. empty space. And like, we always know where we're trying to get to next. But you only focus on like the broad picture until you've broken down to manageable bite size. And I think really importantly, me and Adam have a very long-term deep scripted comic like people years ago might be like oh that's more like you know traditional comics but you know all traditional comics are now web comics now that's just how it is and how we started doing it back in 2008 but you know you guys have very different books from what we do so your workflow is very different Um, I found that uh, I'll start I'll tweet whatever thought I have I need to do a tweet about how the hotel bathroom mirrors are really mean because they're all lit, lighted up on the sides and it's much brighter than my bathroom mirror at home. And I didn't know about this state, this patch of white right here. And that's just, that they need to be less honest. And so considering everybody laughed at that, I'm going to write that down for a comic strip. Um, and so I'll look at what tweets did well and what tweets kind of bombed and then I'll do a stick figure comic out of it. And uh, then I'll hand a, a bunch of stick figure comics to my husband, and I'm like, hey, which are funny? And he'll do a little X or a squiggle or a check. And then I'll take those that do well, and then I'll, I'll make them into pencils. I'll usually work in Starbucks, because there's something about people around you working and doing things. I found that I get a lot done during the rush period, and suddenly I'll stop and look up, and everything's dead and quiet, and the rush is gone, and I can't work anymore because I need other people around me working. It's something about get, getting on uh, FaceTime with friends who are also working at their day job. And we'll just sit there together working with our phones looking at each other. No. Um, and then once I get to the inking part, I'll get it all online. I've got a template for four panels or whatever with all of the fonts and everything already there in the background, swoosh. And I'll turn on a book on tape. Because the inking for me is turn my brain off. I need, And then it's all little detail work and getting in the background. I can look at a comic that I did five years ago, and I'll know if it was a good part of the book. (laughs) Because all the detail has all of the shading and everything, and there's a bunch of details and stuff. Um, And so I've got audibles, because a good book on tape, I can churn out some stuff that's just mindless that you can't get motivated on. 
Now, I also have a large story arc that I have to um, kind of keep in, in, in focus, but I also, in Kevin and Kel, have a lot of just side stories that go for like a week or two, and those develop when I do a gag that is a standalone, but it leaves you to think, okay, what happens after that? Or how does this person react to that? And then that leads to another reaction, and then it just kind of develops organically as the characters themselves start leading the story in places that I didn't know was there were, that they were going in. So I kind of like give up my authority to my characters. And they usually know better where to go than I do. And I'm always surprised. Um, hello. Hello. Um, so my first question was going to be, uh, how do I start? Um, wow. Good question. good question, but then I kind of thought, you know, that if I wasn't being like lazy and not actually doing my research before asking that question, that's not fair. So I want to ask a question that I can get from you guys, from actual people. So the question I want to ask is, um, what would you do differently when you started out that, uh, you know, knowing what you know now? Do not start with your favorite idea. Oh. You're not good enough for it yet. You're going to make so many mistakes. You're going to screw so much up. You're going to learn so much in your early years. And you're going to wish that you had known that stuff before you started your so, favorite idea. I have to say again, we're doing panel on this. That's true. So we're doing how to make comics that don't suck. And then ironically, like, I think because we even wrote this panel and Dragon Con was like, what's the panel you haven't run? I was like, oh, this one, but it's old. They're like, no, it sounds good. Do that. And so we have learned even more from them. So we will probably like do it, but then like do a little commentary and be like, hmm, but actually... This is what we've learned in the last five years. So da, 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 because da, da, da. we started yeah. with our magnum exactly. opus, we so started with the big guy. Is our magnum opus. We started in two thousand eight when we were young and we were in and our twenties. Dumb as shit. We right. didn't know and what we were like, doing. I'm still very proud of it, but you know, we realized like, uh oh, I think you know, we've bitten off more than we could chew. At the time, we thought we wanted a publisher, which quickly turned into no. Actually, we don't want a publisher. So if somebody could ask about that if we want to in the future. Um, but uh, we I took a break. We did another comic called Rainbow in the Dark. You know, we did a web comic called Kitty Game. We did a uh, how to book, book for Random House. But we always wanted to continue the story uniques, and um, we because of the nature of the story, you have to start at the beginning. And so we had to go back in and try to make that first thing that we had right. done presentable enough that people could pick that up and want to keep reading right, so the new 2015, stuff. we had to make an expanded director's cut of that story. So it is Which is a terrible thing to do. It's a terrible thing to do. You don't want to keep do. going backward. You it's want to be moving forward. interesting for you guys to see how we sucked and got better. Yes, yeah. but, but it's not something that we would ever recommend to, to anybody. So save... The, the biggest advice that I would give is save your best idea. Save yeah. your favorite idea. You probably have others. There's probably, like, if you're serious about writing, you probably have a lot of stuff, that, a lot of or stories you you'd like to tell. Or you think on something else. Or, we yeah, think on something else. Because a friend of ours challenged us to do something else. And we had to come up with, like, five ideas, five pitch ideas in one week because we saw him at one show in Charlotte. And he's like, I'm going to see you next week in Chicago. Like next week, five pitch ideas, and Rainbow is his favorite one. He's nominated for Best Graphic Novel of the Year and stuff. I'm really glad we did it, but that's the kind of thing you got to do now. Yeah. Think about like you got your magnum opus. I know you do. Set it to the side. Set it to the side. Get Save it for when you're else. ready. Cut your teeth somewhere else. Yeah. Then when you're a badass, go back. Yeah. You'd be amazed at what takes off. Mm -hmm. I've got true. a friend that has two comics. One is a fully colored magnum opus. And the other one's a stick figure comic about her family. And I love the stick figure comic. It's amazing. I is that can't Life on the Stick? Oh my god, Life on the Stick yeah. is so good. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, where to start? Do it. 
<laughs> just, just do it. Yeah. You're not going to learn. Yeah. There, you learn so much. And you don't know what it is until you do it. And then you go, oh, that's not working. I My first comics didn't have panels. There was no set structure. It was on a page. Like, I had a person over here, and then I had, like, a box there. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I had to kind of figure it out by, by going. When I started, I didn't know what DPI was. <laughs> <laughs> it was two. That was 1999. Oh, my goodness. So I was That's saving. Adorable. I was archiving <gasps> my art. 72. Oh. I had students in 2016 oh. and 17 making comics the size of a webtoon, which is 800 pixels oh. wide. And I was like, no! I, I, went to print, I went to print the first book and went, oh, I have to redraw the first year yeah. of the comic. Yeah. My first book is great. It's got a bunch of new material in it. It's only in that book. Uh. So the thing is, you're going to make these mistakes. You don't know what they are until you do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, try, try different ideas and stuff. And um, um, I would have, if I went back and did it again, uh, I would have not used my roommates. I would have changed their As names. Characters. As characters in the comics. I would have been like, hey, there are these two people. And that thing you said yesterday, this one character is going to say it. That doesn't happen to be you who can change your mind and try to sue me. Because uh, we're in our 20s. <laughs> and you do that kind of stuff. Because life is long and friendships end. And sometimes people get angry at you. And sometimes they're family members. So, yeah. Um, don't. Don't yeah. use people's names. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would um, I would just draw and draw and draw. Um, I made every mistake in the book, except one. I never missed a deadline, but I made every other mistake. But I don't regret any of them because they were part of the journey. They, it, it got me here. So I don't know if I would change the path any because there were bumps on the way, but... That I don't know if I, I, I would be here if I hadn't made them. Sometimes yeah. not missing those updates gives you the best comics. Like, I'm like, okay, I have to post it. And I came back from a bachelorette party and went, oh, no, I'm drunk. And I still have to post the comic. Here, here's an envelope. I'm drunk. Scan. Post. What do you mean you like that comic? <laughs> you fickle, fickle people. So, so yeah, do it. See what sticks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and and the, the last thing I want to say, one thing picking up on something Bill said, um, other than don't start with your best idea, the other thing that I wish the most is that I wouldn't have been so afraid of making mistakes. There are a lot of things that we didn't do in our story in the beginning that even at the time we felt like we should be doing, but we didn't because I was afraid. I was afraid I wouldn't be good enough. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to tell that story well enough. I'm not going to be able to write that character well enough. I need more time. But the only way you learn is by doing it. And, and, and when I will quick say, like, uh, I think the best thing is too because there are characters that are hard to draw because you may not have had certain life experiences and I think we all get to some degree what we're talking about here find those people you've got to ask yeah them. educate you yourself to, right. you know if, if your concern yep. is you are afraid of making a mistake the answer is charge in educate yourself talk to people learn right. what you need to learn study don't what you need to study line. yeah don't don't just like throw it yeah. on the page because that can lead to worse mistakes <laughs> but if you're too afraid to make a mistake then you're too afraid to get better right imposter syndrome is real nobody thinks they're good enough yeah nobody thinks they're good enough i oh my god oh my god i, I look at other artists and i'm like i suck why am i even trying to do this this is, this is, I, I'm, I'm not 
you know, why does anybody read my stuff? I don't no, think it's no any good. No one else but you could do your story. Yeah. I, well, yeah. So, so as as an art, be, welcome to being an artist. Yeah. No, you are going to be your worst critic, and you never will believe that you're good enough to do it. Yeah. Oh my god, the, trying to sell your book that you did like three years ago, I'm like, somebody comes up, I'm like, where should I start? I'm like, no, this is all crap. This is all the stuff that I did ten years ago. Oh my god, don't look, don't look at that. But, don't. So but, here's yeah. here's what we do with that is I'm always like, yeah, you know, this is really fascinating. We were getting started here, but you know where the gold is? Get to season two on Webtoon. So I want you to read through all of this. I am so proud of this work, goddammit. But over the years, we've got even better. That's magic. Get there. And that gets them excited for yeah. the passion that we have about this. And you people, have to learn People to like passionate. watching you grow, too. Mm -hmm. People like seeing a comic grow and evolve and right. change and improve. They feel like they're part of that journey with you. Garfield didn't look the same for sure. Oh, no, Garfield no. looked totally different. Yeah, no, keep going. I had one guy who was, he was like, oh, no, I have to go back to the beginning of the comic and redraw it. No. No. Yeah. No, never redraw it. Except for us. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but Very particular. Can I, can I say one more thing on confidence? Okay. I think a lot of us grew up in a world where people who were confident were the assholes, right? And, you know, that person's confident, they didn't earn it, so I don't want to be confident to some degree. I feel like I have to be down on myself. I feel like I have to be, like, I don't know if I'm any good, whatever, whatever. Like, you know what? Being confident, there's nothing wrong with that. The thing that I want you to do is learn to be confident enough to say, hey, this is the best I can do right now. It's pretty fucking awesome. You know what? I'm going to keep working at it, and I'm going to get better. And you get better because you know that you put the work in, and the work that you put in gives you the confidence to be better every day and make those dreams come true. So I don't want anybody getting down on themselves because I want you to do this. Thank you guys so much. Don't use real places either. There are some people that have disconnected from reality, right? And they will actually go wherever you describe. Oh my goodness. That's what I'll say Hamilton about. All right. She had some fun stories in a whole, oh my God, I never want to get that, that famous stories. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hi, how are you? Hi. I've learned through experience that uh, artists and story writers are very ambitious people. So, but also, they have these little things called deadlines. Or, or, so, my question is, how would how do you, whenever you need to just get stuff done, how do you balance your creative ambition and the workload that brings with actually getting it done? And a side question on that, uh, when have you had to kill your darlings? Mm, okay. So right before a convention, all of my backgrounds disappear. Because I have to do three comics a day before a convention, so that I have the buffer it through. Now my priorities have shifted. <laughs> All the comics this week are pencils, because <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, so yeah, you definitely the the getting that deadline done, and then and then figuring out where you need to cut the corners. I had a professor in college, at Savannah College of Art Design, for comic books, and he said that for a page you have to balance it with filet mignon and meat and potatoes. Yeah, with potatoes. Yeah, you need to have you have your nice, detailed, really nice piece, and then you have the very basic. You need somewhere for the eye to rest. And so, with my template and my layout, you know, you have your one establishing shot, detailed background, and then you have a close up, and then you have no background with some slash of, of black or something in the background. And so there's definitely a balance, and and working over the course of get all the pencils done, get all the, so that kind of balances out the time that you can put into one piece. And I'll actually work the comic backwards. And so my, as I hurry up and the right, and the art style kind of changes towards the three o'clock in the morning deadline, um, it's not so jarring that I'm getting sloppy. <laughs> so the sloppy's at the beginning of the comic now. Um, so there's there's ways that you can find to cut corners. And uh, and yeah, definitely, I have, I have pulled all-nighters. I have definitely had the, the comic needs to be posted before I go to bed. That means I don't go to bed until 6 a.m. Um, and then there's the, no, no, I need sleep. So 
these are going to be a lot of close-ups. Yeah, we, we once spent a two-week period sleeping in four-hour shifts. Never again. Oh, in order to get a book it. to print on time. So, and, yeah. again, somewhat different because of the storytelling type and stuff, but like to do Webtoon, we have, uh, like, you work real far ahead. If you're going to do something like Webtoon, get a bunch of backlog, right? Because you don't want to start with your first page and you put it up and you're like, yay, but then next week you've got to do the next another page and next week you've got to do another page. You will inevitably eat up that mm -hmm. buffer, but you want to start with the buffer. Yeah. It softens right. the landing. We've yeah. eaten yeah. up the buffer, and that's in part because <laughs> during the pandemic, we took on a whole lot of other work because there was no conventions, and now that conventions are back, there's also, you know, all the other so work. Double the workload, yeah. Plus the conventions, and you know what? We're going to, we're about to take a break from the unique. And that will be a break fine. from posting. Yeah. Posting, so right. that we can then spend all of our time continuing right. to work. Right. Right. It just won't be weekly. But the thing yeah. is, really working way ahead of time. I will yeah. say again, the how to stay motivated panel. We're talking all about that tomorrow. That's one o'clock. Be there. I think it's one of the best panels we've ever run. And that is a modern panel that we did write recently. Yeah, yeah my horror story was the pandemic when it hit, because I do an office strip called On the Fast Track, which is set in an office. So when March 2020 came along and everything shut down, I had in the pipeline all these strips of characters in an office. Because you work a year ahead. Like you've got two months. Two months. You have two months, two months of buffer. So what I had, I was faced with was doing in the space of one week, a month of strips in which the characters head home and work from home. And I still don't know how I did it. It's, I, I look back on that and say, what? That happened? Yeah, it happened. I, I eventually used all of those other strips that they were re replacing. I kind of sprinkled them throughout 2021. So, I've used everything since then, but that was a trip. <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of knowing what to cut when you need to make cuts, um, everything that you write should be working towards the development of the story, the plot, or the characters. Uh, story versus plot. The plot are the events that are happening, ABC. Uh, you know, this happens, then that happens. The end, that's the plot. The story is the heart, it's the themes, it's the emotional core, it's why you give a damn about the plot. Give this our um, so, Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars, the plot of A New Hope is a uh, ragtag band of rebels uh, challenge an Imperial Empire, an Imperial Galactic Empire, uh, for the fate of humanity and the future. That's the plot. Uh, the story is an orphan boy has to confront his father, and in saving his father, he find, winds up saving himself. Uh, it's, it's a bitter, cynical old pirate finds out he's a better person than he thought he was and has to make a choice. That's the story. So every scene that you're writing, if it's not developing at least one, and the best scenes develop more than one at a time, uh, that's something that's got to go because essentially it's not doing anything for you. It's just spinning wheels. Now, sometimes you've got space and you can afford to just, you know, dick off for a few pages for fun, and that's fine. That can be a really good time. But you'll often find that that stuff is still building character, developing your characters and their relationships to each other. Um, anytime we run into something and we're like, I don't know if this fits, we ask ourselves, what are the themes? What is the point of this issue? What is the point of this arc? What is, where does this arc fit into the season? Why are we doing this in this the first place? This is why every season has a theme. Why we have these themes set so that we can always ask that question. And if it's not helping to develop that, then it might be standing in the way of it. Or it might be something we love, but... But we have a and, million ideas. And the other thing is you can always put it somewhere else. You keep it in a drawer yeah. and then sometimes Fire you're it like, away. ah ha ha, that yeah, we there, just, we'll use it. We just finished uh, editing some prose down together, and everything that we cut 
we copied into a second document and just saved as pieces because it didn't work here, but it's a good moment. So we'll just throw it whole cloth into another story down the road. You know, hey, nothing is wasted. There's never anything that just gets fully thrown away. Asterisk. Not nothing gets thrown away, but most things can be saved. <laughs> hard not to use something that you're like but I like it yeah, yeah but it's not working yeah. but I think it's cool and I've already drawn it and it's three o'clock in the morning I want to use it no no it doesn't work I, I've had my my but husband has look over it I know but I'm tired I want to go to bed we had we had as 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 big of an argument as we've ever had and I was like I need a sandwich and we went down to the kitchen and I made a sandwich I ate the sandwich and I was like oh we can work your idea in because we can just say like intermission or something. He, he wanted to do a storyline and I was in the middle of some sort of like I'm at a convention or something and and I had a sandwich and I was like, oh, we can just put intermission and we can put this little story right in the middle. I was like, okay, that works. Sometimes you need to go and make a sandwich. Uh, we take walks and we talk about our stories. We've got a trail behind our house uh, and uh, we get done and we're thinking about stuff and I will use the bathroom, and we always take a nap right after. And after I've used the bathroom, I always come back to Adam. I'm like, okay, what if we do this? Take a shower. Sometimes, God. sometimes she won't wait. Sometimes I'll be in the office, yes. and I'll hear her voice shouting at me from the bathroom. <laughs> but what hey. about if? That's true. She'll That's just carry on the whole conversation. Like, as she's headed down the hall, door closed, she's just hollering at me the whole time because she can't well, wait to finish. What I think talking about your stories does, and this is something I recommend for everybody, whether you have a writing partner or not, verbalizing your stories, I think, allows you to find the holes mm -hmm. in them. And, too, what's happening to me, like the physical thing that's happening to me as we talk about the stories on the walk is it's supercharging my brain with these ideas so that when I have that moment of quiet, my brain can almost, like, put those puzzle pieces together and I'm like, Eureka, that's it, all right. And that's the, where the excitement comes in to go bother Adam again. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you write it out and then you walk away and then you come back, and you read it again and go, oh, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. I'd say it's the same with art. It's the same with drawing. If you're having a drawing that's just killing you and you can't figure out why it doesn't work, or if you're working on something and you're just really frustrated with it, you hate it, work on something else for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, Set it aside. Call it a night if it's late in the evening. Get some sleep and take a look at it the next day. And well, going oftentimes, for a run is an amazing yeah. thing. Yeah. A physical activity. Mm -hmm. You know, Cleaning sure. the house or going for a run, a jog. It like, switches uh, the gears in your yeah. brain. And, and it allows your mind to rest, and the critical part of your mind just sort of shuts off for a while while you're busy, you know, pumping it out or whatever. And when you activate that part again, it has fresh eyes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I do the same thing, is that I'll write a week of strips and not ink them until the following week, because when I come back to them then, I go, oh, this could be better, this could work better. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can't see. When I was in college, we did I we had to do some self-portraits in a painting class. And I was working on a self-portrait, and I worked on it for like eight hours. And I bring it into the living room with the rest of my housemates, and I'm like, there's something wrong with this picture, and I just can't figure it out. There's just something off, and I can't put my finger on it. And I've been working on it for eight hours, oils in an unventilated room. And, uh, and my roommates... I don't roommate, know why. It doesn't make I don't know sense why. <laughs> well, my roommates took one look at it, and they were like... Jenny, you don't have a nose. <laughs> I forgot to paint the nose on my face, and I could not see it. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's, you, you're literally too close to it to yeah. see. Yeah. yeah, it really takes somebody yeah. else that you go, hey, what's wrong, what's wrong with this picture? There's, there like, open a, a window. Uh, I've gotten in the habit of flipping my canvas frequently. while I, I draw on a program called Flip Studio. And it actually has a button that lets you just flip the canvas real quick. And it is kind of the visual equivalent of like resetting your brain. Mm -hmm. Because when you see something in reverse, the mirror image, it's like you're seeing it for the first time. And <laughs> mistakes that you could not spot become glaringly obvious when you see the mirrored image. I wish there was a way to do that for writing. <laughs> 
I wish I could just like flip the text and read it read backwards. It backwards. And now yeah. I, now, oh, the, I see. Ah. I, I, yeah. I have the twice. Yeah. yeah. The closest thing I can think is trying to read your dialogue out loud. And if you can't speak it, they can't say it. Um, always try and speak your dialogue. If you are, are waiting on doing your, your comic because you don't think either your writing isn't good enough or your art isn't good enough, uh, the most popular webcomic on the internet is XKCD. <laughs> no, yeah. I love this. There is not a convention that goes by that somebody <laughs> won't come by the table and remark with a jovial grin, I can't even draw stick figures. <laughs> and I always laugh as though it's the first time I've heard that And a that friend joke. of mine says, oh yeah, the shading always gets me. Yeah. <laughs> and my response to them is always, well, you know, the most popular webcomic there's ever been is just stick figures. Not even faces or genders no. or anything. No. Just uh, circle blank the stick figures. XKCD is genius. It is hilarious. It is broadly applicable and one of the most memed webcomics, yeah. one of the most memed yeah. things on the internet, and it's just stick figures. Like You have no excuse. You got nothing to you be have afraid no of. Right. There is no level that is too low if you have a good idea. And the only way you know if you have a good idea is if somebody else gets to look at it and can tell you. And what's amazing is the stuff that I, I will post, and I'll, I have one that I think is, is a good comic. And there's one that is kind of like, I'm like, this is a throwaway. Guess which one people like more? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. And the most popular one was, was two mosquitoes eating, you know, somebody going, oh, Bob, come here. You got it. Bob, you got to try this. It tastes like chocolate. And me going, ow. <laughs> Mostly people say they're girls. You don't have a male mosquito yeah. drinking from you. And I said, thank you, Internet. <laughs> for pointing out yeah. what's wrong. Um, but yeah, it was such a throwaway, stupid joke. And people were like, that's my, my favorite one. And I'm like... <laughs> or the... I was like, I needed Sunday or Saturday filler. And so I had a, a, a black box with a word balloon. And it's what not to say in the bedroom. It's, it's things like... Uh, we, we were doing carpentry. And, my, and, my, and, and I said, don't make new holes in the wall. <laughs> and so I have, don't make new holes. <laughs> what not say in the bedroom and somebody was like oh I love your Saturday comics that's a black square you should do a book of those and I was like God, fine I'll go on KDP is Amazon's print on demand you upload a PDF file there there's a book if you want it buy it whatever what is my most popular book <laughs> sold? I'm running out. I only have three more on my table. Fickle. Yeah. Fickle people. There's no accounting for it. We'll, we'll spend days on an, you know, a, a full-page splash of an establishing shot of a cityscape. Days. And people will just like scroll by in a couple seconds to get to the next talking head shot. Yeah. There's, you just can't account for it. But if that fancy shot wasn't there, someone would have had a small fancy That's well, true. It sets the scene. Yeah. yeah. It sets the scene. It's, the, it's scene. the, and the unspoken, unseen things that even if you, if it's not there, you might not notice it, but your brain does. Right. And, and you so don't you know. You get pinged on it. You don't know what it is that's drawing people in. Mm -hmm. You know, would anybody have been looking at your black squares with white text if they hadn't already been there for the other work? Can, can I, I'm going to say one more thing. Uh, for you guys. Uh, so this job does take a lot of time, and I want to be honest about that. And Says the girl who's had to draw through the whole panel to get commissions through, done. I've been doing commissions the whole time. That's what all the shaking of white pencils and all that kind of this stuff was. Uh, but, you know, again, if this is your passion, you're going to be willing to take the hit. And, you know, I understand all the need for you time and all that kind of stuff. But we work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. That's what we do. And you know what? At the times where it's uncomfortable, where you're at a family gathering, and you maybe have commissions, or you have little things that you have to work on. Or we have friends over to, to watch TV on Wednesday night. Uh, you know what? We only watch TV, watch TV. Like, we'll have TV on in the background, but we only watch TV, watch TV. Like, well, we're eating food, and maybe once, maybe once a week. It's like one show. One show. And watch it, watch it for an hour. 
like a lot of your little creature comforts and stuff that you love the things that are time wasters being like oh, I just spent a whole afternoon on YouTube adios somebody once asked me what I do for hobbies <laughs> I was like, I don't understand the question. You mean sleeping? I, I Sometimes I get six hours. Oh, it's great. Right. <laughs> but it's the work ethic that you've got to build up. You've got to respect this like a job. Nobody's going to pay you just to doodle in your sketchbook when you feel like it. You've got to respect it as a job. Mm -hmm. And if you do, then it will respect you back. Right. And I think, you know, the work, again, that's where the confidence comes from. Yeah. That's so right. yeah, I, I started I started posting a web com so so web comics weren't a thing. And so when I was in college I saw everybody graduating from art school and going and getting the day job to pay the bills and then they forgot to do the art. Mm -hmm. Um and so I saw, you know, a you know, people posting the comics up online. I said, Okay, this is a way that I'll post it online and if other people are, are, are reading it, that will give me the motivation to post it every day. So that's my deadline. It, you know, rain or shine, I need to get this done. If I go out and play with friends, I still need to go home and get this done. Because if I miss an update, I lose the few people that I've scraped together. And so I was like, I'll do this until I find the day job that has a publisher will give me a paycheck for doodling in my sketchbook. That didn't happen. Uh, and so yeah, having that, that posting every day is that deadline and it gets you to do it and there's no no question like there's no option to not I was like I had a guy be like oh you you can skip an update your fans won't care and I was like oh I'm gonna miss you you're cute <laughs> um, and then and then two years later I was like oh I forgot to post the comic and and he literally kicked me out of bed and was like, no, you need to go post the comic. No, get out, get up, get up, get out of bed, go post the comic. And I was like, oh, I love you, you bastard. Um, and so, yeah, having that, you know, motivation is yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I Anything think we're, I think we're set. So, three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. I think we should say uh, where people can find yeah. us here at the show, and then if we have any other panels or anything like that. Yeah. So... I guess I guess we'll uh, you start over there. We'll okay, start, we'll I'm in the there. artist alley, table one three five. Hey, do you have any other panels? Nope, this is it. All right, um, I'm in artist Last alley. Last year I had four. Dude, oh yeah, you put it in. Um, artist alley is is uh, America's Mart building two floor four yeah. because it starts All at one, top. two, and three. So actually, some people were talking about how as soon as they yeah. got into America's Mart, they would stop start at the top floor to beat the rush. Mm -hmm. um, and I have two more panels. Uh, one is tomorrow night at 1 a.m. Uh, um, and then the other one is uh, Sunday night at 7, creating comics uh, for print and web. And you can find my comic on uh, thedevilspanties.com because devilspanties.com is the fan site that I didn't buy the rights to. Oh. Oh. Whoops. All right, so uh, if you want to find us on the internet anywhere, uh, you can just uh, look up at Comfort and Adam. We're everywhere at Comfort and Adam. You can read our comics on Webtoon, The Unique Rainbow in the Dark, Kitty Game. You can link there from on? our website, yep. comfortandadam.com. Uh, this weekend we are in Artist Alley. We're at table 430. We've got two more panels. Tomorrow yep. is How to Stay Motivated at 1 o'clock and Sunday also at one o'clock, how to make comics that don't suck. Woo! So I think that's it. You guys have been awesome. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for coming. We appreciate it.